let me know that. Do it all. Yeah. Yeah. No what come, what they come, they, what they don't come. Amen. Right. What they even stay. Sometimes we don't want enough to stay. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But do it all. Right. I've learned to depend yes. on the Lord. Yes. Call his name and depend on his word. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I thank God that we are in church. Yes. Amen. That not only don't mind praising the Lord, but we, we are coming to a greater knowledge and understanding of his word. Yes. Amen. Yes. Sometimes praise is cease. Amen. Yes. And you just can't get a worship yes. in. Yes. Amen. Yes. But the word. Amen. It's the word. Yes. Amen. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's the word that I will hide in my heart and not sin against God. It's the word that is going to keep me and help me to get through. It's the word. Amen. Thank God for the word. Amen. Amen. It is my best always to stand before you. Amen. But I feel even a greater pleasure today. Amen. You know how they say the absence does make the heart grow fire. Amen. Amen. And I, I tell you, I miss preaching. Amen. Amen. Well, you better not have talked to me in these last two, three weeks. You were going to get a sermon. Amen. I was, I was preaching at work. I was preaching everywhere. Amen. Amen. It was a word that was in me. Amen. And I thank God. I thank God for everything he's doing and everything he shall do. Amen. How many of y'all know God is truly good? Even in the midst of a storm that was on the way, Joaquin, we even thank God for Joaquin. We thank God for sending Joaquin on his way. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our worship leader. Amen. Our worship leader. Yes, God. I know what I'm going to do with him. Amen. 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 Keep on loving him because God has some great things in store for him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love to see folks just come out. Amen. Amen. When your gift comes out, you begin to give God all what you have. Amen. 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 All of our leaders, amen. All of our leadership, trustees, stewardship ministry. Amen. All of our leadership, our missionaries. Our missionaries was on the move today. I, I can't tell y'all what they was doing. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. I looked at one of our missionaries. She had to go outside. She put on her commando hat. I said, she about to go to work. That's a missionary right there, boy. She put on her commando hat. Everybody else looking like she was in full metal jacket. Amen. <laughs> amen. But we thank God. Amen. That's missionaries on the move. We thank God for that. Thank God for our choir. Amen. Singing the song of John. Amen. 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 I've only had to talk to one teacher so far this year. Hallelujah! One teacher. And it really wasn't that bad. Amen. I mean, he's not a bad boy, but sometimes he procrastinates on homework. Amen. But he got a teacher after my own heart. He missed one assignment. He called me. I've been praying the Lord. You might get know, but get that boy history. Thank you. Amen. And so far, amen. So far, so good. We thank God for that. He, you know, he's a junior now. He, he no chance to be messing around. He gotta get himself together. He gotta get himself together so he can get out. Amen. 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 I know Cole don't want to hear that. Amen. So, so, but we pray to God. And I don't mean get out, get out, but he's going to school somewhere. Amen. 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 But we pray to God. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a glory. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Amen, amen. How many of y'all know there is a word from the yeah, Lord? Today? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. There is a word. Amen. We're going to call your attention, amen, to a very familiar passage of scripture, amen. Um, Psalms chapter 91. Amen. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Such a beautiful writing, amen, that I'm going to read the, the, the chapter in its entirety. I'm not going to try to preach verse by verse, but I got a, I got a revelation for you that you need in this time, amen. How many of you know in times like this? In times like this, God, God got an anchor, amen. That anchor is the word. I never forget that when I was installed at this pastor, amen, our theme for our, for our installation was anchored, amen, in the Lord. And I'm, I'm proud to say that after six years of being your pastor, we still anchored in the Lord. Amen. And we thank God for that Psalm chapter 91. And when you found it, please say amen. Amen. And the word reads as follows. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. 
So he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of the pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand shall fall at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Thou shalt no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. Amen. He shall call upon me. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. Give God a praise right there. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. In the name of Jesus, we come. God, we thank you. We thank you for all that eyes have seen, all that we have heard and done. We thank you, God, for the fellowship, the sweet communion, God, of your Holy Spirit, and the fellowship and sweet communion of our friends and neighbors. God, I thank you for our church family today, God, that you have kept us, God, even in the absence of two weeks, God, you have kept us and kept us strong, God, and I thank you for that. Now, God, it is preaching time, and God, I, I thank you for the type of anointing that's going to make preaching easy. God, I thank you, God, that you have some revelations that you want to get through me, some things you want to show through me to your people, that you're going to make it easy to come out to God, that type of anointing that's going to make preaching easy, that type of anointing that's going to make hearing your word easy, and God, give us that type of anointing that's going to make doing your word real easy. Mm -hmm. And now, God, as we as we go forth with the anointing and, and the power, God, we pray that you cover us, God, with your covenant-keeping power of the blood. Thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus, our cover, our sword, our shield. Thank you, God, that the blood shall cover me, God, that the devil might know whose I am and who we're not to mess with. In Jesus' name, I do pray that let the household of faith say, Amen. Amen. Boy, some things I'm going to show you. I hope, I pray. Amen. That my little brain, amen, work it all out. Amen. Now, come on. Uh, today for our time together in the word of God, uh, I want to preach and, and declare from the sermon subject, uh, I know it was the blood. Amen. Come on. Uh, I know it was the blood. Now, today we take our text, amen, uh, from Psalms 91, uh, a beautiful song of praise uh, and worship unto the Lord God all, Almighty. The, the psalm, uh, it a signs us the privilege of calling the Lord uh, my hope and my peace and calling him my joy, calling him my strength, amen. Uh, see, that's what you really are saying in essence uh, when you call the Lord uh, your God, your strength uh, and your refuge and your fortress, amen. Uh, how many of y'all want God to be your refuge? Uh, your place of trust? How many of you want God to be your strong tower? That's what you're saying, amen. Uh, uh, this song, uh, it promises us deliverance. It promises us protection and security and a blessed assurance. Amen. And it, it, it inspires us to have confidence in our God. This song encourages us not to be afraid of things that go bump in the night or be afraid of the arrows that fly by Okay. Uh, it said, don't be afraid of disasters and, and diseases and, and that cover the earth like a dark cloud. Um, don't be afraid of the devourer, the, the destroyer that walks about. Uh, don't be afraid of uh, what your eyes 
eyes may see, even what your heart may feel. Uh, your eyes may see, uh, they may see danger, uh, and they may see the devil coming at you. But the Bible says uh, in Psalm 91 uh, that a thousand shall fall, uh, even at your right hand, at your left hand, uh, and ten thousand will fall at your right hand, but it won't come nigh thy dwelling. Come on, huh? That's a protection from the Lord uh, uh, that we find in this psalm. Uh, you will see the reward uh, of the wicked. You'll see the wicked get uh, what's coming to them. Uh, wicked might be standing right beside you all day, every day. Uh, and you'll see the Lord come uh, and bring a judgment. Uh, but that judgment ain't for you. You're a child of God. Uh, you'll see the wicked fall. Uh, you'll see the wicked cease uh, from troubling. Amen. You'll bear witness of that. Uh, but it won't harm you. It won't hurt you. Uh, this is a song of your security. Uh, you'll find out in this song that even the angels, amen, they have uh, and bear responsibility to you uh, to see you safely through. Uh, all things come against you, oh God, did anybody know when? Uh, sometimes things may come against you, amen. Uh, you don't know which way they came from and how they came. Uh, all you know, all of a sudden, you find yourself uh, in trouble uh, and you need a uh, ever present help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible said, I'll uh, give an angel uh, his duty is to make sure uh, nothing happened to you, amen. Uh, the angel's duty is to be assigned to you uh, don't care what's going on, he ain't got no lunch break, uh, don't take no vacation, amen. Uh, but he's there to be a uh, ever present help uh, in a time of trouble. Psalms uh, 91 promises power uh, over the obstacles in your life, uh, and, and it promises power over the things uh, that come against you in the spirit, amen. Uh, you know, the devil is always busy, uh, even the things that come against you uh, in the natural, amen. Uh, again, the devil is always busy. Sometimes you see uh, the actual roaring lion. Uh, sometimes you may see uh, the dangerous snake uh, and even the dragons. Uh, amen. But sometimes uh, all those lions are not in the jungle. Uh, some of them hanging around the corner. Amen. Uh, sometimes not all the snakes crawl on the ground. Uh, some are walking and sitting right there. Don't, don't, don't look. Uh, uh, some of them are walking. Uh, and sitting right beside him. Oh, the dragon might not be of the fairy tale kind, uh, uh, but uh, they might not throw fire out their nostrils, but they will throw shade, uh, amen, on the workplace, amen. Uh, but don't fret yourself with evil doers, uh, because Psalm 91 promises power uh, to overcome all the works uh, of the enemy, amen. Uh, see, according to our text, amen, uh, all these glorious promises uh, are given to he, uh, him, uh, her uh, that dwelleth in the secret place uh, of the Most High uh, and shall abide under the shadow uh, of the Almighty. Uh, can, can I tell you, uh, for a while, church, uh, I began to think, uh, and I used to think uh, that this verse, uh, this text, uh, it only meant uh, that the secret place was found uh, by them that are desiring uh, to get close to God. Amen. Uh, all the want to know Him. Uh, in an intimate way, uh, I was thinking uh, that the secret place uh, was an actual place, amen, uh, a place in the spirit uh, where we could go, amen. Uh, you know, we as Christians are famous uh, for always putting everything in the spirit. Uh, oh, it's a spiritual thing. It's always spirit. Uh, and sometimes we deny what we need to do uh, to get to that spiritual place. Come on, walk with me. And I am going somewhere. Uh, see, we always want to call on the spirit. Uh, well, it's the spirit. Uh, the Spirit told me to go here. The Spirit told me to go there. And you ain't asked God about nothing. Amen. You ain't let God order your steps. You ain't let God give it you. But if God was ordering your steps to go this place and that place, he would order your steps when he came to give your offer. Yeah. But the Lord was ordering your steps, amen, to go this place to do this or that. He would order your steps to not to touch that person. Oh, yeah, I know it. He would order your steps, amen. Not only in some things, but everything. If you want to call on the spiritual aspect, where everything is of the spirit, because God made everything. Come on, somebody. And he made it by his spirit. But see, we quit to call on the spirit. So then, you see, see, when we call things to up, call things to be of the spirit, then we can we can judge those things. Something happened to you, you ain't in the spirit. Something going wrong with your neighbor, they're not in the spirit. 
They might not be close to God. Because the very say he they try to be, maybe they're not in their secret place. But you don't know nothing about my secret place. My secret place might not be your secret place. But I'm gonna tell you, the secret place is more than just drawing not to God with your mouth. Amen. It is more than just drawing not to God or with some with some perpetrating action. Amen. See, right now we can claim to be in the secret place. Amen. We're in the secret place. But do you know what? They ain't trying to scare nobody, but you know a, a gunman can walk up in here right now and shoot every one of us and we claim to be in the secret place. Yeah, yeah, it happened. The people that just got shot in, in Oregon, several of those people pro proclaimed and professed God. What happened? Some of them got shot. Some of them lived. Some of them didn't. So you can't put it on a specific place or a specific manner of how you're going to be close to God. But can I tell you, uh, there is a place, uh, amen, uh, there is a place uh, where we got to understand uh, that, that, that that is more than just say uh, that we are intimate, amen. Uh, see, I used to think it was just about them uh, that were trying to obey his will uh, and follow his commandments, amen. Uh, see, those were the ones, I thought, uh, that would find themselves in God's secret place. Uh, and can I tell you, uh, all the actions uh, to get close to God, uh, we still need to do them uh, because we need to be in relationship with God. Uh, don't stop seeking uh, a closer fellowship with the Lord. Uh, but I believe the secret place, uh, with all these promises, uh, has another component to it. Amen. Uh, if you look uh, at who wrote this song, uh, and when you find out who wrote it, uh, then you find out when and when why they wrote it, and then you begin to get a better idea uh, of what the secret place uh, truly is. Amen. Can I tell you today, uh, it's Bible study time, huh? Yes, uh, Psalm 91 said, was written by Moses, amen. It was written as a, an expression of praise and worship after, mm -hmm, not before, but after the tenth plague in Egypt. All my Bible students know, all my, all my Sunday school people know, Brother Big, that the tenth plague was the plague of death of the first moment. That was the, that was the, that was the plague. See, see the first nine plagues. And I can't name, I won't name them all for you for time, but the first nine plagues, for the first nine plagues, it didn't bother the, the Israelites. They didn't have to worry about nothing going on. The first nine plagues was aimed and directed directly at the Egyptians, amen. For the first nine plagues, it was enough for the children of Israel not to be affected by these plagues, but them just to know God, but them just to be identified with God. And all they had to have other than that was a zip code that put them in the land of Goshen, right outside of Egypt, where the children of Israel lived. But for this tenth plague, this tenth plague of death of the firstborn, uh, something more was needed. Can I ask you today? Uh, <clears throat> can I tell you rather that there's a time coming uh, when something more is going to be needed from you? Come on, uh, God has been talking about challenge uh, and pushing us uh, for the for the past several weeks, uh, and just because we took two Sundays off uh, due to the right grace, ain't nothing changed. Uh, amen. God is still pushing. That God want more out of you. You know why God want more out of you? Because there's more in you. Come on, you got to understand this. Uh, for the you might have went through all your life uh, and been all right uh, with what was going on. Uh, the Lord kept showing up uh, and kept showing up, uh, even though you weren't as committed as you could have been, uh, even though you weren't as strong as you. Were. Out there being, huh? It could have been a whole lot of things going on in your life, huh? That was a little weak, a little wishy washy. But can I tell you, huh? There's gonna come a time, huh, When you got to stand strong, huh? Put your two feet in the ground, huh, And stand on the word. We sing about trusting in the word. We sing about trusting in the Lord. There's gonna come a time when there ain't no other choice, huh, But for the Lord I live, huh, And for the Lord I die. It got to be real in us, huh? And can I tell you, uh, it's coming a time uh, when the other things, the things that used to work uh, and things that didn't work uh, on certain levels, uh, then when you get to a higher level in God, uh, they ain't working no more. Amen. They ain't working no more. It ain't that God stopped. God demand more. The Bible lets us know in Psalms 8 that out of the mouth of babes and suckers, 
I have established them. Let me tell you what that means. When you first start out, God has put a standard in you for that level. He establishes you where you are. Amen. Everybody does not come into the church with a 40 year knowledge of the word. Everybody does not come before God with the same level of anointing. Everybody does not come before God with the same level of commitment. Everybody does not come before God with the same level of faith. We start out, amen, where we are. And for some of us, that means starting out as a babe. Somebody getting the milk. And out of, the, and out of that situation, God begins to bless you on that level. God begins to protect you on that level. It's certain things that come against me uh, that could not that you could not stand. Uh, because if you came uh, if what came against me at times uh, began to come against you, uh, you would utterly fall. God said uh, that the very elect would fall uh, and he didn't shorten your days. Uh, some things I faced that uh, you couldn't deal with. Uh, but that's the level I'm on. Not saying I'm there, not saying I'm better, not saying I'm better. I just been doing this a little longer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God has called me to a different place. But wherever you are, God protects you and keeps you on that level. But when God expects you to grow, the same old things that you can't get back, amen. Doing the thing that you have known God 10, 12, 30, 40 years, you can't get back with the same things that somebody just coming in can get back with. You can't. You can't, God is calling you to a higher and deeper walk. Uh, the challenge is made, is made clear for you. Uh, God wants more. Uh, how many of you understand this time? time uh, that come a time when you just got to want to give God more. Uh, maybe God, uh, maybe God ain't calling you yet. Uh, and you and God know where you should be, uh, but you ain't been committed to nothing yet. Uh, and you find yourself, I wonder why God don't trust me with this. Uh, I wonder why God had not trusted, trusted me with that. Uh, don't have to see I'm capable. Sometimes I can't let you be, I can't let you you get into everything because you ain't ready. You ain't ready for the commitment that it takes to do the next thing. But how many of you sometimes just say to yourself, I just want to do more for the Lord. I just, I just want to do more. I just want to be more. I just want to go harder, run harder, stand in no favor. You can't keep doing what you've been doing. Come on. You got to get that. Amen. You got to get it. Sometimes it takes more. Uh, something more is required of you. And this is where the children of Israel found themselves at the time of that tenth plague. Amen. They needed to do something more. See, the more that they needed to do was to allow themselves to be in total lockstep with the Lord. Not only say, I'm committed but be committed to, to show your commitment to the Lord. And that commitment had to be, uh, had to start with the blood. Come on. Uh, somebody say the blood. Uh, somebody say, I know it was the blood. Uh, in this case, amen. Uh, the blood uh, was the blood of an unblemished lamb. Uh, old church, uh, the secret place uh, that Moses wrote about, uh, sung about, uh, and praised God from whom all blessings flow with about. Uh, it was under the blood, amen. See, you could have got by in those days. You might have looked like it. You might have looked like an Israelite. You might have walked like an Israelite. But you didn't have to call yourself a child of God. Nobody had to really know it because there was no sign to say that you were in the army of the Lord. But for that template, in order for that template to pass you by. See, that template was the death angel that was going to come and he was going to touch the lives of them that were not under the blood. Come on. Huh? If you wasn't under the blood, huh? oh, if you were the first born in your house, huh? you was going to die. Huh? But in order to stand, huh? you had to understand this. Huh? In order to live, huh? you had to understand this. Huh? In order to move, huh? you had to understand this. Huh? In order to get free, huh? to be healed, huh? to be delivered, huh? to be at rest, huh? to be at peace, huh? you had to be huh? under the blood. Come on. Huh? It was the blood. You had to be under the blood. Amen. Can I tell you, Moses, along with the children of Israel, they were eyewitnesses to this event. But thank God that Moses was more than just an eyewitness. He was a spiritual witness that had got a revelation from the Lord. And it came, it came down to his spirit. Oh, that God had revealed to him the instructions of just what to do and how to dwell in God's secret place. See, too many folk, they 
want to be in God's name. They want to walk in his name. They want to reap the benefits. They want to reap the blessing. But they don't want to shed the blood. Come on. Too many folk don't want to be identified. I want to come to church. I want to get in the prayer line. I want to get my blessing. I want to get my financial miracle. I want to get my healing. But don't you know that everything of God is because of the blood? You got to be willing to put some blood on you. You got to be willing to get in the blood. You got to be willing to lay in the blood. Or in Luke chapter 6, Jesus said, You can't follow me unless you're willing to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And when Jesus said, Drink of my blood, it was the focus that, Oh no, we ain't getting down like this. And then we get to leave him. And then we get to go their way. I don't know what happened to them, but I I can't tell you about this one man uh, that I do know. Uh, Jesus looked at Peter uh, and said, you going to leave me too? Uh, and Peter said, oh, no. I will eat uh, of your flesh. Uh, I will drink of your blood. Uh, you got the word, man. Uh, you got the word. Uh, see the word. Uh, we sing about the word. Uh, we praise about the word. Uh, we love the word. Uh, we look for the word. Uh, but it was the blood, man. Uh, it was the blood that don't sign my name. Uh, or the word might have called me. Uh, the word might have told me. Uh, but nothing got done. Uh, I tell you what some blood said. Uh, and when you willing uh, to see the blood. Uh, oh, when the blood. Uh, and come on, your situation. Uh, when the blood. Uh, when the, oh, I got some more. But I can't even preach all that. Uh, when the blood. Uh, I said when the blood get, get, get going. Uh, when the blood began to get applied. Uh, when the blood began to come down. Uh, oh, there's a change uh, coming over you. Uh, the secret place. Uh, or the place of covering. Uh, that's where the blood is applied. Uh, the children of Israel said, uh, Moses, we hear you, man. Uh, we want to be covered. Uh, I don't want to lose my life. Uh, I don't want to lose what God got for me. Uh, I don't want to die in Egypt. Uh, see, we don't want to die in Egypt. Uh, can I tell you that sometimes Egypt look good. Uh, sometimes Egypt feel good. Uh, sometimes Egypt smell good. Uh, Sometimes Egypt just is good, but it ain't good for you, amen. You don't want to die in Egypt. I want to live with the Lord. And if I'm going to live with the Lord, you know the only thing that keeps you alive right now is the blood running warm in your pain. You need the blood. You need the blood. God ain't tell you to touch yourself. He ain't tell you to hurt yourself, but you still need the blood. The truth of the reason you need the blood of an unblemished lamb. They put the blood on the doorpost. That the blood, the blood signed their name and the blood protected them. But you know what? That was good for them. But what about them? I need the blood. I need healing. I need the blood. I need deliverance. I need the blood. I need peace of mind. I need the blood. And do you need the blood today? Do you need the blood? Well, I got a word. I got a word for you. Not only do we know it was the blood, but we know who provided the blood. Come on, somebody. Do you know today who is your blood giver? Who is your blood donor? Who is it? Who is he that uh, went to the blood bank uh, to tell me of a fountain uh, that shall never run dry uh, and is filled uh, with the blood uh, from Emmanuel Pan? Uh, they tell me uh, that there is a man uh, by the name of Jesus uh, that came down one day uh, and he said, My folk, uh, they don't perish, uh, but they need a blood transfusion. Uh, so let me go to the cross. Uh, don't say I got you now. Yeah. If I kill you, uh, the bloodline stop uh, right here. Oh, God, uh, we didn't know uh, who you were dealing with. Uh, if he needs us, uh, Emmanuel, uh, got some blood uh, that'll never run dry. Uh, I'll come uh, to the fountain. Uh, come uh, to the fountain. Uh, and it'll never run dry. Uh, and it is the truth. Uh, and when you look them on his back, uh, he 
shed for blood. But thou didn't know that the blood he shed from his back was from my healing. To the tomb, the veil that arose and put a crown of thorns on his head. And he shed some blood. But don't he know that that blood was shed so my mind did right. Pierced him in his side as the blood was shed. Don't he know that that blood was shed so I can say no, never alone. No, never alone. I ain't got to be by myself. He pierced him in his hand with some nails. But don't he know that blood was shed so I'd never be in that. That I can have the anointing flowing through my hands. He pierced him in his feet. But don't he know that I can walk I can talk, I can walk where angels, where angels will take me. I can walk, I can stand on the word because of the blood. I don't know about nobody else, but I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Do you know it's the blood? Yeah. You better want it. Yeah. Do you want the blood yeah. all over me? Yeah. It's keeping me alive. Yeah. I need your blood. Yeah. I need your strength. Yeah. I need your blood. I need your love. I need your blood. I need my healing. I need your blood. I need to be saved. I need the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Do you know it was the blood? 
the blood will give you joy. The blood will speak for you. The blood will come up against whatever's going on in your life. You can plead the blood on any situation. You can plead it before it happened, while it's happening. You can even plead the blood after it happened. The blood does not know limitations that are known to earth in the earthly realm. The blood is a spiritual thing. It's of God. The blood that flows from Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. So if God is with us, the blood is always with us. Those that are called according to his name, walk according to his promise. We have the secret weapon of the secret place. The blood of the most happy. The blood will speak for you. But not only will the blood speak for you. Let me tell you something. God is so gracious. God is so good. To those that are not saved, those that are not under the mark of Satan, those that do not know him uh, by name and are committed to him, the blood will speak to you. Amen. Amen. The blood will speak to you. The blood will say you need to come unto Jesus just as you are without one plea. The blood will say come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and are full of burden, take my yoke upon me, but my burden is easy and my yoke is light. The blood will speak to you. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The blood will speak to you. I will let your blood speak to you today. If you don't know the Lord, let the blood speak to you. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. But you can't be glad with the Lord unless you say and know the Lord. I don't just mean know how to spell his name, G-O-D, or how to spell it. Jesus' name, Jesus, and she never is. I don't mean that I need you, that a knowledge of who he is, but do you know him down in your heart? If you don't know him, you better find out who he is. It is the blood that's calling your name. Before the blood can sign your name, the blood will call your name. Somebody, the blood is calling your name. See, this kind of message don't come forth. Amen. This kind of message don't come forth with the death of me. Somebody needs to know the power of the blood. Somebody's facing some things that, oh well, it's too late now. Because they already have happened, they already in the process. They ain't nothing like you do. Yes, it is. The blood knows no limits of space or time. The blood got no limits. The God needs to build back the earth up just for you. Build back the earth up just for you. If that's what he need to do, he'll stop things. Ask Joshua. Joshua said, Lord, I got to fight this battle. I need more time, God. God said, I'll make the sun stand still. And do you know what? Scientists say there's a missing, there's a missing time. There's a missing time in the history of mankind. We don't know what happened to it. I know what happened to it. It was the blood. It was the blood that said, stop. In the name of Jesus, stop. It was the blood. Some of y'all going through stuff right now. It's already been gone for. It's at the ninth hour. It's at the it's at the close of the day. It's at the end. But you ain't never played the blood on that day. I dare you right now to plead the blood of Jesus. We used to plead the blood of Jesus all the time, every day. He used to say almost like it was crazy. But old people know how it works. Because I, I dare you right now, whatever you're going through, whatever the need to start, plead the blood over it. You got a sick place? Plead the blood over You got something that ain't worth the rain? Plead the blood over Something that ain't worth the Plead the blood over Plead the blood over and watch what happens. And if you're not saved, that's what I'm saying.